And I'll give you an example of the Jewish community in Australia. The Jewish community have very high positions, very high positions. And you would see a common a surgeon who is probably the head of, the, of a department in the Royal Women's Hospital, the Royal Melbourne Hospital. And he's got his dreadlocks, wearing the whole outfit with the skull cap, everything, walking in the hospital proudly. Respected, everything. I know Muslims who are entrepreneurs up there, in businesses, in the corporate world. And the more they stick to their deen, emulate Rasulullah in his character, his behavior, the more people like them. It's only the racist and the bigots who don't like bigots. This is a word we use in, in Australia, bigots, and um, meaning those who are uneducated and talk uh, without any education. There was a Jewish man who came to me to Preston Mosque back in Australia, and he said, I'd like to hire some people to work for me. I said, I'll just put your advertisement in the paper. He said, no, no, I want Muslims. I want Muslims. I said, why Muslims? He said, because Muslims are the most honest and the most trustworthy. You know, because he wants to guard his money. <laughs> he wants Muslims that won't lose his money. <laughs> so he wants Muslims to guard his money. And we got a Muslims, alhamdulillah. Emulating Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means that you emulate him in his character. What was he? He was honest, trustworthy. He didn't cheat. He didn't lie. He stuck to his promises. He wasn't two-faced. He was open. He was, when you saw him, he was very clear. So if you emulate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his sunnah, then you actually can advance in the modern world. Very much. So the only tip I can give you is two things. Number one, don't stop emulating Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his character. And the way you do that is by learning about him. Number two, the problem is getting the right authentic information about Rasulullah. This is the problem for us. A lot of us, when we emulate Rasulullah, we learn the wrong things about his sunnah. I'll give you an example. This hat which I'm wearing on my head, hands up if you think it's a sunnah. Hands up if you think I'm emulating Rasulullah's sunnah. Some people are scared to put their hands up now. طيب, let me explain to you. The thobe that I'm wearing and the cap which I'm wearing, it is a sunnah. But it's not a religious sunnah. There is something called sunnah, sunnah tashri'iyah and sunnah ghair tashri'iyah. Did, did people, did you know that? Legal sunnah and non-legal sunnah. The mushrikeen of the Arabs dress like this too. Abu Jahl wore this. Abu Jahl wore something like this on his head. A amama, a turban. This was an Arab tradition because they lived in the desert. White cap with a kafiya, which is the, uh, the khimar. In order, khimar means yakhmur, which means to keep away something, which is the heat of the sun, and give him shade. Right? They wore the thobe like this to, you know, ventilation in the, in the deserts. That's why they... The iqal, you know the agal, the iqal, you know, you've seen in the Emirates where they put that, the strap here, it's called the iqal. In Arabic, a lot of people think this is the sunnah of Rasulullah or the companions. No, no, this is the sunnah of the Bedouins. Some of the companions, this was their tradition because they used to have camels where they go into the desert. And when they reach the middle of the desert, there's no trees, there's no rocks, nothing to tie the camel on. So they used to have the iqal on their head. Iqal means to trap or to tighten or to restrain. So take the iqal off and put it in the knees, in the knee of the camel so it doesn't get up and run away. Ya'qul, ya'qil. Al Jaman, then famous quote by Umar al Khattab saying, I'qal wa tawakkal. Tie your camel and then rely on Allah. What I'm trying to say is, understanding the Sunnah is very important. What is emulating Rasulullah and what is not? If you want to emulate Rasulullah, I mean, every single thing he did, well, your life's going to become complicated because not everything Rasulullah did was sent down from Allah. For example, if you like soup, then the only soup you're going to have is pumpkin soup. Because Rasulullah ate pumpkin soup. The only type of meat you're ever going to have is the shoulder of the lamb. Because Rasulullah loved the shoulder of the lamb. But Khalid ibn walid entered and he was eating lizard meat one day. And he said to Rasulullah eat with me lizard meat. And Rasulullah went, I don't know this type of meat in my, my tradition, in my sunnah. Sunnah just means tradition, my people, how I was being raised. So Khalid kept eating and Rasulullah was watching him. 
Do we say that Khalid bin Walid is not emulating Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? So in the modern world, you might like a different type of food. You know, you might like some Japanese food. Rasulullah SAW never ate Japanese food. Does that mean if you, we, we can't emulate Rasulullah SAW because we're em eating Japanese food, for example? So what I'm trying to say is, Ya Ikhwan, emulating Rasulullah SAW will only advance you in the modern world. In fact, the modern world took their knowledge off us, Rasulullah SAW. Can I just say one more thing before I go to the next question? I'm quite passionate about this. This is what we talk to our students always about. You know the sunnah of dipping the fly in the food? Your hands up if you know the sunnah of dipping the fly. Okay, hands up if you've ever had, encountered that where you had to eating the fly dip, got dipped in your soup or food or something. Yeah, I had that too. <laughs> you know, Rasulullah told us about the sunnah that if a fly lands in your food and dies in it, dip it and then throw it out because one wing carries the bacteria and the other wing carries the antidote. I was on the internet one time and there were the, these people, you know, making fun of this hadith. This hadith was up there and making people, what's this man backward nation following this ancient religion of a man who was in the desert? If a fly lands in your food, you dip it. We told you these Muslims are dirty, you know, the flies dipping in them, it's been in the toilet, being here and there. Suddenly, an article showed up. A research article by a very prominent research, uh, a woman researcher in America, biochemist, and they had, this article said, we were asking the question about how a fly can survive in the most dirtiest bacteria and not die. We thought it would be a good idea if we can extract the antibodies from that fly and make it an antidote, an antibody for human beings injected in them as a vaccination to make them stronger and more immune against bacteria. Because you know that type of bacteria, which the fly goes to, feces and urine, that's the cause of hepatitis which kills you, hepatitis A, B and C. And this, this researcher said, we were trying to find out how do we extract this antidote, this antibody from them. And they said the only way we found this, we, they thought, you know, we can't go into its blood and take it out and inject it and all that stuff. They said the only way we found that is the easiest way and the most efficient way is to just dip them in liquid. Wallahi. We dip them in liquid and that way if they die, the antidote naturally falls off their body into the antidote and we can transfer it into a vaccination. Everybody, no more comments. Emulating Rasulullah will only advance you. But the problem with the Muslims today is that we don't understand the Sunnah. We take it so far away to the point where if you eat on a table, you're not emulating Rasulullah. What's that? If I dress in pants, I'm not emulating Rasulullah. Obviously, if you're going to become like that, it's going, to be a it's going to be a big problem for you. One brother, he was studying engineering, he left it. He wants to emulate Rasulullah. Like, Ya Akhi Tayyib, Rasulullah spoke about engineering and maths in the Quran. You're emulating him, inshaAllah Ta'ala. And Rasulullah was flexible, very flexible, you know, with, and fluid. So may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala grant us understanding of Rasulullah's Sunnah. Tawadal Akhi. Yes, we'll take the last question. I'm sorry, Ya Akhwan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Sheikh, uh, my question is uh, in Islam, uh, what is the definition of love? And love? the second love. And second part of this question is, how do we show our practical love for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi in our lives? Brother, you need to uh, refine that question. When you say love, what kind of love? Are you talking about love for Allah, love for the Messenger, love between spouses, parents? What? Uh, what kind of love are you talking about? Uh, love for the Messenger. Love for the Messenger, yeah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How do you define love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Very simple, I'll answer it very quickly. In the ayah in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Say, O Muhammad, if you truly love Allah and His Messenger, then follow me. Follow the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah will love you back and He will forgive you your sins. So, when you love someone, what do you do? You find yourself imitating them. You find yourself following whatever they say, right? Mm -hmm. If a husband or wife, wife loves her husband, she'll do anything that pleases her husband, even if she doesn't like it for herself, right? Isn't that right? You love your parents, you'll do anything that pleases them, even if you don't like it. Also, if you love someone, you naturally find yourself liking to be like, wanting to be like them. They teach this in business, that if you admire someone, you find yourself acting like them. Isn't that right? Our youngsters, they not 
inshallah not here, but youngsters back in Australia, they love music and they love those celebrities. So they look at people like Madonna and uh, uh, Rayhana and uh, Baluta and uh, Bakliki and all those type of different names. You know, I'm just teasing them with names now. And Michael Jackson and I don't know who. And um, So what they do is they start to em emulate them and dress like them and imitate them and uh, everything like that. They start to, some girls, they become anorexic because her celebrity um, is also on an on a type of diet, right? They think if I become anorexic, I'll be with her in Jannah. I don't know what they're talking about. So if you love someone, you find yourself naturally emulate them. And this is a sign that you love Rasulullah When you find yourself, you know, really passionate about knowing how he lived, really loving, you actually, you actually read about his life. You try to understand his sunnah. And these are all signs that you love him.